special evening, a very transformational evening um, for the museum. And I will tell you that 11 years ago, we had the opening of the Karsh exhibit on the first floor, and we gave credit to Estralita Karsh for helping us to transform the museum with this beautiful exhibition of portraits by her late husband and, um, and changing the, the design of the first floor. So tonight, we have the pleasure, I have the great pleasure of telling you that my dear friend Joan Quinn, who I met when I first joined the board over 20 years ago and immediately connected to, we were, uh, I just loved her and we had this instantaneous uh, connection and it was, it was special and it still is and I love her dearly. So I want to say, Joan, that what you have done for the contemporary gallery, galleries, is equally as important and vital. And I thank you so much for sharing your beautiful collection with us and your vision. I think, I, I think it was your vision. Well, we shared. I think it was Michelle's vision. <laughs> she, she was the one who prodded me on because she was such a close friend. So I thank you, Michelle, and I thank all of you for being here. But it really is, it's, it's a wonderful evening. And I'll tell you, first I want to thank the JHM Foundation. And their generosity is just beyond words. I, I thank Sandy Masakian for making the introduction. I cannot uh, not, not acknowledge you because you were amazing in doing that. And they visited our museum and fell in love with it. And they decided to be a part of our, our, our museum. And, um, and without them, we could not be here tonight. So unfortunately, Lisa Gregorian could not be with us, but she'll be here in the fall, hopefully with our next uh, event with the artists. But I want to make a special note of thanks to them as well, to JHM as well. Um, but I do want to say this is really a beautiful evening, a beautiful exhibition. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Henry. Thank you to the museum team, to Jason as well, and to Joan and the entire Quinn family, to Amanda and to Jennifer. And I, I would be remiss if I did not remember dear Jack, because Jack was a peach, and he was Joan's rock. And we had a lot of fun together over the years. And without Jack, it's, Unfortunate he's not here, but I think he's here in spirit. So with that, I just want to thank you all again. I hope you'll tell your friends about it. Come back and visit us. And I do want to um, make this quick. I want to pass this over to, this is our curator, Rachel Wainwright. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you to all of you for coming. Working with a collection of this scale uh, I think is many curators dream. I, I met Joan Quinn in 2018. She came to the Bakersfield Museum of Art where the show was originally mounted uh, to see uh, the survey show that we had worked on of Charles Arnoldi. And when I got the email saying that Joan would be visiting the galleries that day, it sparked a memory. And I recalled after doing studio visits, I'd been at my position at that point for about nine years, and this name Quinn, Joan Quinn, Joan and Jack Quinn, oh, the Quinn home, kept coming up in studio visits and all of in my meetings with artists. And when I got the email that said, Joan Quinn, one of Chuck's big collectors, will be visiting the show today. Can you walk her through? Thought, oh, that's that name. I need, I need to look up this person. You know, she keeps coming up. Um, a, a quick search on Google made me realize this was not just a collector. This woman was an icon in her own right. Um, the, the first thing that came up had to do with the portrait collection. Uh, Joan had been documented by Basquiat. She had worked with Andy Warhol at Interview Magazine and had pink hair. And I thought, I cannot wait to meet this woman. She walked into Chuck's space. I thought I was ready and prepared to talk to her about every piece that was on display. And she walked through and Oh, yeah, the stick series, oh, Machu Picchu, oh, the chainsaws. Okay, you did a great job. Thank you, bye-bye. And 
I, well, my gosh, she really knows these artists. You know, it wasn't as, um, you know, often when you meet with a collector, it's very formal, it's very didactic. They want to talk about the provenance and, and the grandeur of their collection. And I realized very, very quickly, and it has even, it become even more apparent that this is a collection that is about friendships. Um, this exhibition, I think, celebrates a community that Joan and Jack were behind. And you know, after that first meeting, I was invited to the Quinn home to view the collection after a while. And, <laughs> um, you know, when I went into the space, after, you know, I'd been installing shows that celebrate the history of California art. And so to me, to see Ed Ruscha's next to Kenny Price's, next to a Chuck Arnaldi, next to a Laddie Jundil, this was an iconic moment. You know, this, these are the, the grandfathers and grandmothers of contemporary art on the West Coast. But to Joan, these were her friends. And it, it took some convincing to get Joan to really agree to doing the scope of the show that I had envisioned. I, I saw this collection as an opportunity to celebrate and explore a period of art that is pivotal to um, the West Coast, to Los Angeles, and now to the, to the greater art world. And using this collection, deciding on 30 years to narrow my selections, because there are so many pieces in the um, collection, but also because the, these 30 years that are explored um, now in this, ex, this gallery space are really what put Los Angeles on the map. They, you know, this is the moment these artists are responsible for allowing LA to be regarded as a counter market to New York. They are, this, these 30 years are the moment when the West Coast art scene became incredibly diversified. Um, prior to 1970, and in display in this first bay here, you have see the, the cool school, the studs. It was a very male-dominated art world. But as soon as the 1970s hit, you have the, the rise of the civil rights movement, you have the feminist movement, you have the Chicano art movement. And so this breaks the scene. All, there's all of a sudden, this incredible diversity, and that's what I was excited about exploring and what you really see displayed on these walls. But as, as much as I tried to approach this from an academic or historic lens, I was continually reminded that you could not separate these collectors from this collection because they were not collectors when they started this collection. They were, you know, found themselves in this moment as this mo the momentum of these artists' careers was mounting. Um, the collection was formed organically. The collection, again, was about relationships. And I think that the way that we've organized it, while there is an incredibly historic and academic um, thought in the curation, you, the way that it's hung, you are forced to acknowledge that these are artists that were all working at the same time. They were working, it was a very close-knit scene. And so when you look at pieces hung next to each other, you start to see these overlapping ideas and intentions. And that in itself is exciting, and it, I think it provides what Joan and Jack have devoted their lives to doing so well, is making these connections and really the power in community and, and the power in um, relationships. We, we start the show with introducing Joan and Jack, and uh, I talked a little bit about, you know, how Joan was an icon in herself, but what she gave to, and what she and Jack gave to these artists is uh, really was supporting them before anybody else was supporting them. And they were not the only collectors doing that, but Joan, I, <laughs> it, no, I, I don't mean to just sing Joan's praises, but I, I, I continue to be inspired in witnessing the way that she connects people. She continues to promote artists. She continues to put people in the right rooms and pushing the artists into the foreground. And so I want to make sure that I do acknowledge everybody. This was not a one-man show by any means. This is about a 25-person deep show. This is a celebration of community. This, this show is a celebration of relationships, which Joan is responsible for. So thank you so much.
and, and of course, we want, I want to thank the JHM Foundation for making this all happen. Let me say thank you to you, Rachel, for all that you've done. Thank you to Michelle. Thank you to Jason and the team. Thank you to Michael Varbedian, who's been our backbone since Jack's gone. He's really stayed with me and helped all the way along. Aaron, my daughters, these two people here that are so great. They've learned how to, to um, curate a show. They're, they're both out of school, but I think this has helped them see a new way to, to look at their path, to look at their future. Um, I can't thank um, Gina's great-grandmother, her great-grandmother, Jasmine Magradichan, whose daughter founded the, the foundation that Jasmine left in her own honor. But Jasmine and my mother were great friends. Jasmine was a warrior among women. She was fantastic. She did so much, and I think she would be so happy to see this and to see, and, and I'm so glad you're all here, and I hope you all come back again and bring a friend, because it's been so much work, and Rachel, and Henry, and Jason, and the whole team, and Aaron, and Amanda, and Jennifer, Everyone has worked together. It's been a community. And as Rachel said, she convinced me to do this. And we want this to be academic. We want students to come in and see it. We want people to feel that there's a way to look at art that they haven't looked at before. It's not an investment. It's a friendship. It's a put something on your wall that you love. Don't ask somebody for something that's going to go up in price at the next auction. And I thank you all. Thank you.